Okay, it's time for us to take a look at our very first hot topic. Well, we have been told that smugglers have lost 1.51 billion naira in eight months. And we have been joined by CSC Abdullahi Aliyu. Aliu Maywada, Chief Superintendent and National PRO, the Nigerian Customs Service. Good morning to you, uh, CSC Abdullahi Maywada. Good morning to you and good morning, viewers. Okay, so when I saw that uh, news, that piece of news, I wondered, is this good news or bad news for the economy? I think um, it's good news. Um, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, number one, uh, for you to effectively collect revenue or generate the requisite revenue for national development, you need to make sure that all illicit trades are not allowed to uh, be, uh, to have their way into Nigeria. Now, we have three fundamental functions that uh, has to do with um, one trade facilitation, revenue generation, and anti-smuggling. Each they are what I would call they are interwoven and interrelated. If you decide to abandon one, then two will suffer. Just a simple example is how tripod work. If you remove one leg of a tripod definitely the tripod will not stand. So when you hit on smugglers, when you decide to do effective uh, anti-smuggling along the land borders and seaport, definitely you facilitate legitimate trade and revenue will also upscale. So those are the three functions that are interrelated and interwoven. Uh, and you have to do each at the same time to get uh, the a holistic result. Okay, so when these things, well, let's talk about these losses to the smugglers and how they have become beneficial to our national economy. First of all, some of the things we've seen, especially um, when you talk about oil, for instance, crude, when they are caught, the illegal miners and, and those who steal crude across the sea, we find that they burn the goods, something many Nigerians have cried against repeatedly. And it does appear that that's the same thing that happens with the customs. When you confiscate some of these things that are not expired goods, what do you do with them? How do you translate them or transform them into uh, something beneficial to the economy? Well, uh, if... Um I may say it, uh, the, 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 the management of CJO, of, of confiscated goods in Nigeria Customs Service, there are requisite laws and guidelines and SOP, as well as standard operating procedure in managing all those seized items. Number one, when you apprehend those items, definitely you have to uh, uh, undergo uh, investigation. If there are suspects, you, you need to prosecute them, and if you have to build a case file for those items. Now, the last end is for you to secure uh, court condemnation. That court condemnation will give you uh, the mandate to dispose those items. Now, these items are of different categories. You have items that are perishable. You have items that <coughs> are flammable. And you have items that ordinarily you cannot even put them in your warehouses because of their nature. Maybe they are combustible or whatever. And you have items because of their size, you will do what you call constructive warehousing. Now, if you get those items, if those items are perishable items, there are procedures you follow in line with them um, in collaboration. Definitely, you can dispose those items that are perishable immediately. If they are perish, if they are volatile items, items that are a little bit very, very uh, difficult, very uh, 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 combustible, flammable, let me use this word. Mm -hmm. You instantly dispose those items, and the money is paid to the federation, to the fees, to, as fees to federation account. Example is PMS. We do inter intercept PMS that meant for smuggling outside the country. 
and immediately we dispose those items in tandem with the law. And those items are the money is paid to the federal government. Now, consumable items. The first thing you do to consumable items is to determine whether those items are fit for consumption. And for you to determine whether those items are fit for consumption, you need to get the relevant agency to certify that those items are fit for consumption. After certification, like rice, like other items, we do hand over to orphanage homes to displace uh, persons and so on. Those are the things. Even those items that are spoiled and not fit for consumption, like rice that is spoiled, we give those items to all three products. So we do that. So it's not that um, we just, um, uh, but when we realize that item is not fit for consumption, and definitely that items will be destroyed. E.g., there are some categories of poultry products imported or smuggled into Nigeria. If you know the condition in which they smuggle those items, you won't even allow your dog to eat those items, and we won't. So those items are destroyed and will not allow anybody to consume those items because they use them. Um, these chemicals used to preserve um, uh, whatever, uh, preserve a um, uh, dead body or whatever you call it. They use that to preserve those items. They don't even come in a frozen and entirely they decompose. So those items, we don't allow anybody to consume it. We destroy those items instantly after following the requisite procedure. Now that you're saying this, it brings to mind uh, the issues that we've heard regarding frozen foods. The, the, the frozen foods we have, frozen chicken, frozen turkey, frozen fish, how safe are they for consumption? Are they part of the ones that escaped customs? The ones we have in the country today? Well, uh, uh, the issue of frozen fish, there is what we call quarter, fish quarter. There are procedures for importing fish into Nigeria. We have our own quota, and uh, we have to meet the national consumption. A quota is being designated, and those items are only imported through the seaports. So they don't come in through the land borders. So when we see a frozen fish, uh, a container of frozen fish or poultry products, definitely because there is no facility to check made those items, just the same way with medicaments. Medicaments are also not allowed to come in through the land borders. In fact, there are designated ports that are meant for these items to come in through. So uh, fish has a quota, and uh, that quota is what is given, allocated to the importers of fish to bring in, to meet up with the local demands. So it's not just arbitrary importation of fish like that. And it's through the seaports, not land borders. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, well, I guess it's the EFC, uh, the, the NAFDAQ, I beg your pardon, that may have to be, and, and, and the consumer protection rights as well, that may be in the best position to let us know how safe some of these ones you'll find in different stores are. But let's talk about the security of the borders we've known over the years that our borders are quite porous. How much of a challenge is this still today? Has it improved from what we knew five years ago? Well, um, we are, we, the one of our function is to suppress smuggling to the barest minimum. And we cannot in any way believe or say that we have completely eradicated smuggling. It will be very difficult to do that. Our role is to suppress these activities to the barest minimum. Uh, if you are you look at uh, the, the the level, yes, we have a very vast and porous land borders. However, with the adequate use of intelligence and uh, <clears throat> collaboration with agencies and the strategic uh, use of deployment of technology. We have um, substantially suppressed smuggling to the barest minimum within our nation borders. This can be uh, seen very glaring in the seizures we are recording day in, day out. Either these seizures can be seizures of drugs, seizures of Indian hemp, seizures of um, ammunition, seizures of even consumables such as rice and other items. So we are doing everything possible to man the border. However, I will say there is room for improvement, and that room for improvement makes um, 
the system now to uh, try to improve in the use of innovation and technology. We are planning to 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 deploy uh, geospatial intelligence, geospatial um, uh, uh, apparatus to to man our borders. We are moving into e-borders now, where you can have infrareds, and those infrared can be used. You can deploy drones and so on. So part of the process of um, end-to-end uh, modernization of the Nigeria Custom Service is to make sure that we are maximally deploying latest technology to man our borders. And uh, in due course, um, you will see some scanners, mobile scanners, or fixed scanners in some of our land borders. We already have three in our seaports, three major seaports, uh, Tinkan, Apapa, and uh, Patakot in Oni. And very soon you see uh, the re 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 revisiting of um, this um, kind of technologies in most our approved border posts. Now the pro problem is mining the unapproved routes. We we'll continue to be ahead of them, and uh, if they devise this, and will be ahead of them and tackle uh, the manners of smuggling, both across uh, the, the western planks and, and, and the northern planks. Because um, anti-smuggling in the northern part of Nigeria it's quite different from what you do in the southern part because the, 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 the geography of those areas are quite distinct and the nature of smugglers are quite distinct. So we are deploying every strategy to make sure that um, we have effectively manned our borders. Thank you. Where do we have the worst borders? Is it in the east or the north? Or the west? Well, um, uh, the context of worst it's, uh, it's, 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 it's contextual, and uh, I don't want to go into this one is the worst and this is the best. Uh, this is easy to handle. Each have their peculiarities. For instance, if you move to the northern borders, it's about porosity. What I mean by porosity, it's, it's a very, very uh, vast land border across very arid area, close to Saharan area. So it's uh, an area where you have um, very few vegetation and a very vast land. So for you to cover that vast land is very difficult. Starting from KB down to Sokoto, down to Katsina, down to Jigawa, down to Yobe, down to Meduguri, those are borders that are very wide. If you go to Meduguri alone, it has borders with three countries, with the Cameroon, with the Niger Republic, and with Chad. So I think um, that is the peculiarity lies on the geography. Now, if you move to the southern borders, this is where you see thick vegetation. This is where you see vegetation that's very thick and where it's somehow very difficult to access. Accessibility to those areas is very difficult. These are areas also you can see some commonality with the north, maybe using motorbikes to smuggle or to ferry in uh, this kind of smuggle items into Nigeria. Some use motorbikes where our vehicles cannot, may not be able to reach. For instance, also the the the, 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 the condition of um, I mean I mean the, the, the nature of um, whether we are in the rainy season or the climate also determine how uh, difficult will be to to manage smuggling. Now it's in the rainy season. You will realize that maybe in the south now some of these areas are not motorable. So it is also difficult on the smugglers and also difficult on on the Nigeria Customs Service. So those are the just peculiarities. But I cannot scientifically say. This is worse, this is the best. But both areas have their own unique challenges that we are confronting with. So clearly you do have serious challenges manning the borders um, and, and controlling the things that come in because of these peculiar challenges that you've talked about. What is the level of synergy that exists between the customs and the security agencies manning the different borders uh, you know, across the country? Um, I would like to uh, refer to the one of the core uh, policy trusts of the present Comptroller General of Customs, which has to do with collaboration. He has three policy, policy trusts. One is innovation, collaboration, and consolidation. And uh, consolidation is about building on what someone has done in the past and look at all those challenges and build on that to make the system better. Now, the issue of um, uh, collaboration, one of the cardinal uh, uh, things we have feel it's very important to us is collaborate with sister agencies. We cannot do it alone, and no agency can do it alone. Now, the CGC have decided to, in his, uh, some of the visits, he has visited the chief of army staff, and, and the core uh, uh, issue behind the visit is collaboration. He has visited the inspector general of police, 
And uh, in the, one of the demands he made is that um, there are a lot of multiple checks, checkpoints along the Lag lagos Abidjan corridor, which is from mile two to, to Seme, which is a very strategic area when it comes to trade through the land borders in Nigeria, because it's one of the major uh, land borders we have that has what we call um, uh, a dual border system, which we call uh, um, uh, uh, a, a system that connects uh, two borders together between two countries. I don't want to use the technical and technical terminology so that people will understand. Yes. So that combination makes it very important, very germane in trade facilitation. And, and the IG uh, believe that um, w what the CGC has raised is, is it's right. And they even promised to move together to come and visit that uh, border area and, and see they, they wipe up all, 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 all the illegal checkpoints, either by customs or other agencies or police. Uh, and, and they promised to do that. So that is a, an area of collaboration. And uh, today, there will be a, an MOU that will be signed between Nigeria Customs Service and Federal Safety Corps. And what is it? If you have decided to smuggle vehicles into Nigeria, and we have integrated our system with Federal Safety Corps in such a way that your vehicle will not be registered. And at the time you want to register a smuggled vehicle, we will be allowed, there will be an alert to custom system, and you will not get your vehicle registered. And it can be, it could be uh, apprehended. So if you have succeeded in smuggling vehicle, now we are using collaboration to use that uh, synergy, that interagency collaboration to make sure that we, even after smuggling, we will be able to get those smuggled vehicles from you. So it's something, it's just a teaser. The proper event is coming in, coming up um, later in the day, around 3 p.m., and you will see an MOU that is coming between the rest of the Last week, the CGC in also visited the director of uh, state services and uh, the director general, and, and the visit is about collaboration. So we believe we cannot do it alone. We cannot do it alone. Collaboration with stakeholders, collaboration with sister agencies, collaboration with host communities. We believe when we are in, on the same page with these host communities, they will not harbor smuggling. They will be on our side. They will believe that what we are doing is for them. So collaboration is one of the key uh, 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 um, uh, mantra of policy trust of the acting controller general person um, and the system, the Jokasam service, we believe in that, and we believe that is the only way we can succeed. Indeed, I, I hear these efforts, and I think they are laudable. However, I think we should also look at the main causes for smuggling. If we're going to fix this thoroughly, we may have to need, in fact, we would need to fix the main causes of smuggling, high taxes and customs duties. Um, how should we fix this? This is 63rd anniversary we are celebrating as a people. And there are some things that um, we should have actually dealt with to a great extent that in 2023, we shouldn't be experiencing certain levels of illegalities. How do we fix, because people will import whether we like it or not. And I imagine that some of the people who are importing illegally would have probably loved to import legally. So how do we put an end to um, this high level of illegal importation, high taxes, customs duty? Well, um, you are talking about high taxes. And uh, whatever we collect is a product of fiscal policy of the government. And uh, government do not develop fiscal policies arbitrarily. It is something that is done meticulously because um, you look at so many indices before you arrive at a particular uh, policy. Now, we are responsible for implementing fiscal policies of the government, and we do not formulate policies. We do not decide this is the percentage of duty to be collected. However, it's our responsibility while implementing the policy to educate people, to sensitize them why they need to uh, key into uh, the, the fiscal policies of the federal government, because we are part of the government also, because we are, uh, ser we are serving uh, the, the nation, and we are rendering a service to the nation. So it's our, our, our honor to explain to Nigerians why these things are, where they are, and how they are. Sometimes it's not a product of um, maybe high tax, maybe it's a product of maybe uh, exchange rate. Why not we look into the issue of um, encouraging exportation in th instead of always one way importing uh, items into Nigeria. If mm. we, we keep on saying that we must import before we survive, then I think um, the, the, the strength of our NERA will continue to diminish. 
and 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 the pressure will be on our naira and why dollar will continue to appeal because these items are imported in dollars and this duty collection are calculated based in dollars the cif value of items imported that is cost insurance and freight of vehicle to arrive at the customer in dollar and now the stress is on, on dollar. So when you export, definitely you are boosting your foreign, foreign exchange. Let's think on how we can manufacture. Let's think on, on how we can export uh, Nigerian finished products outside Nigeria. Then uh, in the area of what are we doing to, uh, to, to, to uh, ensure that these items, um, uh, the taxes or whatever people are there, I feel sometimes when you implement policies, you need to explain, you need to persuade. You need to strike a balance between enforcement and persuasion. It's not always that it must be kinetic, it must be forced for you to implement. Sometimes when you sit down and explain to Nigerians, Nigerians are very understanding. They need explanation to understand why they are doing this. If you have um, uh, a duty on vehicle, when you explain to Nigerians that we have national automotive policy, and that automotive policy is about how do we assemble vehicles in Nigeria, that's why duty and charges are imposed on imported Tokumbo, let me use Tokumbo, emphatically used vehicles into Nigeria. Why not we think of going back to that 80s where we have a Peugeot automobile, where we use 504, where we use best line, evolution, and so on, assemble in Nigeria. So those are the things these policies are trying to uh, drive us into. So if we explain to Nigerians, it's not only about imposing taxes for the sake of collection of duty. There are motives behind this importation of this vehicle. That's why you have um, exemptions. You have waivers. Waivers and exemptions are meant for people importing to manufacture. Mm. Okay. So that's why you have um, uh, section, uh, uh, the chapter 99 of, of, of the CET Common Excellent Tariff is uh, have been activated. The reason for the activation is to allow for importers who are importing raw materials to process into finished goods to be able to do that. So I feel um, we need to look at the issue holistically, and that is when we realize that some of these policies are meant for our good. It might not be an immediate something, but in the future, we'll be able to reap better and we'll have a better economy and a better nation. So do you also have a free customs duty on farm equipment and machines? Of course, for, 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 for um, raw materials imported, there are, there are activated chapters in the tariff that are meant for you when you are importing raw materials. There are schemes that are meant for, to encourage manufacturing. Uh, there is all the manufacturing import scheme and so many things that um, ordinarily, if you are importing finished goods, you will not have an um, opportunity to leverage on those items. So let's bring in materials, raw materials, process them into finished goods, add value to those materials, we create jobs, and we export outside Nigeria, and we gain more foreign exchange. Indeed, that is that, my that, advice. To the dream of most Nigerians is to have the manufacturing sector very, very highly active and competitive. Most Nigerians who patronize locally made goods, if we have enough of them to choose from, but the, the, even the sector man, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, are crying right now that the economy, the, 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 the environment is no longer conducive for them to operate. Some of them have shut down and some have lost their staff. What do you say to the government with regards to that? Uh, what I can say is um, I, want, I don't want to uh, digress from my core functions as a custom officer. My, 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 my plea to them is that um, whatever we do to facilitate trade and legitimate trade, to encourage importers uh, to, of, of these raw materials to manufacture, we we'll do it. That is why um, of recent, um, uh, the Controller General of Custom has decided to uh, come up with uh, uh, the issue of um, authorized um, economic operators. If um, you, you, you find a reason to be part of AU, it will be a very good thing for you. So we are, we are now uh, going into from fast track uh, to, to AEO, and the issue of advanced ruling is coming in. All those are mechanisms uh, put in place to encourage trade facilitation. We have interaction with the people from the free trade zones, like uh, the, the heads of, um, 
uh, OXA and NEBSA, we met. There are some issues that they raised that has to do with Nigeria Custom Service. Committee was set up, and based on that committee, we were able to resolve some issues. All these issues are to facilitate trade. So we will do everything within the ambit of our power, within our functions, within our responsibilities, to encourage manufacturing, to encourage state facilitation, to also encourage export. That is why presently we have dedicated time for export, and we are planning to make sure that all export seats in our various command at the seaports are collapsed into that dedicated terminal so that people exporting items into Nigeria, outside Nigeria will find it very easy and seamless. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think that's a perfect note uh, to wrap up this uh, discussion. CSC Abdullahi Ali Mewada, Chief Superintendent and National PRO, Nigeria Customs Service. Thank you so much for your time and insight this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to educate Nigerians. All right, so we'll take a break and come back with our second hot topic. Do stay with us. <laughs>